Hi everyone, meteorologist Joe Chaffee as we take a look at the tropics and uh, want to show you a couple of things going on. First off, we've got Tropical Storm Gaston, which continues to move to the northwest. Very little change in intensity here overnight. Top winds are 65 miles an hour. And we still have some uh, unfavorable uh, conditions here for strengthening, but it doesn't appear to be weakening uh, much more. If you look right here, you can see there's an upper low that Gaston is pretty much now east-northeast of. So in a little while, it's this upper low is going to pull away, and Gaston is going to be far enough north where it's going to be back into an environment for strengthening. So I wouldn't be surprised if this thing winds up eventually strengthening to 90 or even 100 knots, uh, getting it into Category 3 status, but it continues to be no issue with regards to development. Now, back to Invest 99L, which remains rather weak as we look through the overnight, and we'll go to close-up view of the satellite this morning. There is a weak circulation, and it's a little hard to pick out, but it appears to be right about here. Now, we are seeing some thunderstorms developing to the east of that circulation center this morning, but, uh, you know, they've been kind of coming and going, and the, th the thing does look like a bit of a mess. So uh, I would suspect that if even if this is the case, uh, that development is going to be rather slow. It's not the most favorable conditions aloft at the moment. Plus, you still have interaction with uh, Haiti and the Dominican Republic going on, and those uh, the high terrain there is really disrupting the development. And that terrain is also high in western Cuba. It's not high as you go further into central and eastern Cuba. So you know, it'll be when the low, when this weak low center maybe gets over toward the western Bahamas that we might see uh, a better shot for development. But we could still pick out the turning of the clouds. You can see how they kind of arc in here and then turn uh, going from uh, east to west and then uh, from uh, northeast to, to southwest right in here. So this, this is where I think the weak circulation is. And when we uh, look at the uh, surface map plots, uh, L, the L would be the low center. That kind of matches up with what's on the satellite. You can see it's a, it's a fairly weak low uh, here, very broad. We have a, a north wind over an observation station in central Cuba. Um, winds are light uh, northeasterly, north northeasterly on this uh, other reporting station. And then you have southeast winds uh, going on in the uh, southeastern Bahamas. So you know, it's like kind of like right in here. You got this big, broad, low pressure center. Uh, so um, you know, we're, we'll see how this progresses as it moves um, toward the northwest. Now, with regards to what this is going to do, um, models really, <clears throat> I'll show you the most aggressive, and, and that's the always seems to be the HWRF first. And it, it does nothing until you get into later Sunday when it starts to develop a low uh, near the Keys. And then because it takes a track, uh, pretty much toward the west-northwest after that, it does develop it into a hurricane. Now, this is the only only model that I saw. There's actually one or two other ones <clears throat> that uh, develop this into a hurricane. Everything else, every, every other model keeps it either as a tropical storm or um, less. And now when we look at the clustered model plots, I'm going to go back to those maps in a second. Uh, when we go to these clustered model plots, you can see that the primary track now is through the Keys, except for this one particular model, which kind of takes it over southernmost Florida. But it's through the Keys and into the southeastern Gulf of Mexico. So this is where conditions probably would be the most favorable for some kind of development, given the uh, conditions aloft and the upper air, uh, uh, the conditions aloft and the 90 degree water temperatures that are in the southeast Gulf. Let's jump back. I'm going to show you the um, GFDL model. Um, which uh, continues to be consistent in the fact that it shows absolutely nothing with regards to development here. It just finally gets a weak low to form in the northeastern Gulf of Mexico along about the middle of next week. Uh, we'll uh, take the GFS now, and I'll go to a different region. You know, the GFS has been pretty consistent <laughs> for the last number of days, showing very little to nothing developing here. And other than a weak low, I'm going to just back it up. Uh, you can see it's, it's kind of meanders a weak low through the keys and then sort of jumps it around. One of the things I would caution is about the fact that there's up to a lot of times with these tropical systems, they don't match up. The global models don't always handle them well, you know, in both directions. We saw the European a couple of days ago 
with its famous 924 millibar low going into um, East Texas, West Louisiana, and now it's go it, that idea is gone. Eventually, by the way, if you look at the GFS, it does eventually develop some kind of low and then takes it out to the east northeast. You know that this is down the road for later next week with regards to um, the system. It just takes forever to get it through, and we'll take the uh, Europeans' view, which if you see here now, it's even the European, which has probably been the most aggressive of the global models in terms of showing intensity, now shows a weak weather system. Uh, that turns uh, into the northeastern Gulf and eventually moves to the northeast and east. It really doesn't do very much with it at all. Now, um, I would just say we'll just have you know I would just say we're just going to continue to follow this along as uh, as it develops. You know, one of the keys you know I've been pointing out the fact that we've got this um, big upper ridge in the eastern part of the United States, and you can see it here. Um, this is the upper high on the European, and it just kind of stays there. There's really no way for anything to move up the East Coast with this kind of upper air, especially because late next week a deep trough forms right along the coast and moves offshore. I mean, that's a pretty uh, solid push of cool air coming down for late next week and into next weekend, if that's correct. So, uh, you know, with this kind of upper air, you're not going to get any kind of tropical system to move up the East Coast. So I think the question is whether something does develop in the Gulf of Mexico where the possibilities of something other than a tropical storm um, are uh, higher and that could have greater land impact. But for now, um, we're just going to follow the models along and follow the satellites and everything else as we have been. And uh, just keep it tuned right here over the weekend. SNS Storm Chasers, meteorologist Joe Chaffee.com, weatherlongisland.com. For those of you who have subscribed to my YouTube page, I thank you very, very much. If you are new to my YouTube page, please subscribe. It's free. Uh, it will remain free, and um, I really appreciate it. Thank you.